Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to Season 5, Episode 23 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. You can see I've got my rolling machine running at the moment, making a bunch of iron plates. We're going to need a good amount of these guys for the build that we're about to start working on. Um, now, last episode I made myself a peat farm so I could have a steady supply of peat, which is a great way uh, to run what we're going to be doing this episode, which is uh, constructing a steam boiler. You can also see that uh, since last episode I've turned on my blaze rod production farm. Now, blaze rods and peat are both good sources here. Um, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of, uh, you know, both materials because uh, we're going to use a lot of it in our uh, in our steam boiler. So let's check it out. If we uh, take a look at coal, for example, you'll see that coal uh, produces about 1.6k heat, 3.2k heat for railcraft. Okay, let's see what a blaze rod does. Okay, that, does, that, that guy does about 2.4. Um, and peat, does about 2.0. Okay, so uh, blaze rods are about, what, 20% better than peat? So a little bit better if you use blaze rods over peat, but peat is still a very solid option. So uh, I'm making myself in my rolling machine a bunch of iron plates, as you can see. Going to grab them, and then I need to get myself a uh, firebox. Okay, now uh, we're going to need a solid fuel firebox. Okay, for that we're going to need uh, a bunch of bricks and a furnace, and we're going to need a fire charge. Uh, we know that that's blaze powder, gunpowder, and coal. All right, we can put that together. That shouldn't be too bad. Uh, so what I'm going to actually need here, I'm going to need, uh, I'm making the maximum size boiler, and I'll explain why in just a moment. But you'll note that I'm going to need nine solid fuel fireboxes. So better get myself a bunch of bricks and a bunch of fire charges. How am I for uh, blaze rods in here? I think we'll get some more, I'm sure. But uh, for now, get some of this. Uh, get a few pieces of coal. That'll do. Uh, what do I have? Charcoal in here? No. All right, so nine coal. Good to go. Uh, I need to get some blaze dust, and then I got to work on uh, some clay. I don't know that I have quite enough of that stuff. Let's see. Fancy bricks. Yeah, I really don't have much, do I? Need some more. Uh, luckily, there's a good way to make clay, by the way. Uh, you can see here that you can combine uh, with uh, red cobblestone, if you have any of that. Or you can go ahead and uh, get it from a minium stone with gravel. Not bad. Not bad option at all. Or sandstone, for that matter. Or flint. So a bunch of different options here to get yourself uh, some clay. What's this stuff? Oh, sludge, right? Yeah, so that'll be good. So I'm gonna go get myself uh, a bit more clay and then I'll be back. Meanwhile, uh, you guys might have noticed I've made a few upgrades to my sorting system since the last episode here. Basically, all I did was uh, run some tubing up through the wall here and you can check out how this works uh, just by me drilling in. Uh, I've got, um, basically, right here, I set this guy up as a restriction tube. This line right there, the yellow, or the orange one, okay? So what that's going to do is any orange items passing by that can fit in these blocks up here will, and they won't go into the chest. So you can see all the cobble and dirt going up into those guys, into the barrels. Um, but anything excess like uh, cracked sand or netherrack or anything else that feels like coming through that path will be allowed into that line. So that's going to be pretty neat for us. It should uh, make it a little bit easier to hang on to all the stuff we're getting. It's also really nice to be able to walk up to a barrel and just left click to get yourself a stack of whatever's in it. Awesome. And uh, if you want to put it back, just as easy. Right click. Cool. So let's get some clay. Minium stone's great for this kind of thing. Just like, hey, I have a few resources I need to get, you know. Got to deal with it. So let's do this. I'm uh, going to cook up some stuff powered furnace that'll do and I'll be back in a few minutes when this is done or of course don't forget you have an induction furnace nearby that'll make things a little bit quicker so uh, while that's cooking I'm gonna go get some blaze rods straight over here you can see I'm running the farm a little bit would like to get a few more of these guys a stack for now will do that should be plenty because uh, like I said I'm gonna alternate between blaze rods and peat to see how well I can run these boilers all right, this should be done by now. So let's put everything together. First, get some fire charges. Cool. Oh, okay, that got me a lot more than I needed. Oh well. I'm gonna actually get myself a little bit more of this stuff. I'm 
So I'm going to need nine furnaces. Plus fire charge and surrounded by brick. Ah, so close. Just need a little bit more of this stuff. I did cook a few in here, so yeah, we've got enough. Awesome. There we go, solid fueled fireboxes. And you'll also note that there's a liquid fuel version. And for that, you're gonna need uh, a bit more advanced stuff. You're gonna need some steel plates um, and a lot of other craziness. So, but don't worry about that for now. Uh, for now, I think the solid fuel will do as well. Cool. Also, I wanna go check in on my uh, little furnace thing down here. Oh, good, we got a lot of steel ingots. Nice, those are gonna come in handy uh, very soon. All right, did you finish up with your work? Yes, good. I wanna get the last three of those because I actually made, I think, exactly enough. We're gonna find out though. If you combine these like so, you'll get yourself a low pressure boiler. Now there's two types of boilers uh, in, steam, uh, in steam power and railcraft. Uh, you got your low and your high pressure. And I'll explain the difference uh, between the two in just a moment. But you'll note that uh, you'll need some iron plates for the low pressure. If you wanna go high pressure, you're gonna need some steel plates, which require four steel. So noticeably more expensive. Uh, but the first one we build, I think, will be low pressure. We may eventually upgrade to a high pressure one. Basically, uh, low pressure boilers will um, you know, be a little bit slower to process their uh, fuel and produce, uh, you know, a little bit less steam. But high pressure ones burn faster and hotter and uh, produce more steam over the same period of time. Now they do have a, a little bit of inefficiency in the high pressure one as they're heating up, but once both have reached their maximum running temperature, they should be just fine and uh, have the equal amount of fuel usage. So you get the same amount of power uh, per fuel with low and high pressure, but with the high pressure ones, it's just running faster. So I wanted to start with low because I think we'll have a good amount of power generation with this stuff. And then we'll uh, you know kick it up into high a little bit later on in the series. So I'm gonna need a few more items here that I'm gonna craft off camera because you've seen a few of them before. All right, and uh, when I'm done, I'll be back. Also, I'm gonna build that house over there. All right, you guys have seen this system enough, I think. There we go. And while that thing's cooking up, I need to go get myself a couple buckets of water. I've got almost everything else I need here, though, and I think we're ready to start building this thing. Let's go grab some water from over here. I think I got some right past my cow farm. I gotta automate that cow farm. I'm gonna do that pretty soon. Yeah, I have some cool plans for that, by the way. Gonna be awesome, I think. All right, how do we do? Good. Everything's built. Get back my resources. Cool. I think I just made a mob trap, by the way. <laughs> That's gonna be funny. Alright, while I'm here... Oh, no, I didn't want to put all these in here. I want to get my wand of equal trade and just put this stuff back. And get my uh, crescent hammer to take care of this stuff. Okay. Look at that. You can hear there's just a ton of mobs in there. Be careful when you're building with this thing. That happens. It's alright. I got a plan. Ta-da! Take care of those guys. Nice. I'm just gonna do this. There you go, zombies. Have fun down there. I need more water, more uh, glass. I'll take care of that later. I'll clean up the roof in a bit. Let's get a uh, door here. That looks nice. All straightened out. Excellent. This is gonna be my massive power plant. It's gonna be pretty awesome, I think. I'm going to get some more glass, clean up the roof, and then we'll start putting everything together. All right, so let's start talking about how to put together our steam boiler. I've got some, uh, you know, nice little stepping stones here to climb our way up into this house. Uh, might wind up with a way to get in. Why can't I walk in like this? 
Okay, that's weird. Interesting. Might be a bug with the boots, to be honest with you. Weird. Oh, look at that. You get stuck here. That's funny. <laughs> All right. I have to report that one to Asimov, I think. Here's a good test. This is how we test bugs. See how that worked just fine? And boots the traveler on, and I can't walk in the door. Interesting. All right. We'll uh, manage that later. So steam boilers, let's check them out. Uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, I think what I want to do is have, let's see, they're three by three is what I'm going to build here. So if I went like this, and again, guys, this is kind of like a good way to test out your builds before actually placing anything down. Probably should have measured this room before I went and built it, but I think if I put them up against the wall, we should be just fine. So if I put it like in the corner here, see, there we go, perfect. I think I did measure, I must have. All right, so we'll have some steam boilers running back here and uh, we're gonna have a couple other things generating power in this room. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna go with like the center block. Um, and if we expand into more steam boilers later on, cool, all the better. So to get started building your steam boiler is pretty easy. Just gotta run this down like this. These are your uh, fire boxes and that's where the fuel goes into the uh, steam boiler. You can see you can't do anything with it right now. And then on top you gotta place your low pressure boilers. So let's set these up like so. Now you have to have, um, you can kind of do this in a, there's different ways. Uh, you can have all kinds of different sizes. I'm going with the max size. Uh, like the smallest is like a one by one. So you could have a one by one or you could have two by two or uh, the three by three <clears throat> is the highest you can do. Now in terms of height, uh, you're going to want to go uh, at least two by t uh, two blocks tall on there. So there we go. We've got a steam boiler. Awesome. Now the bigger they are, the more efficient they get. So I'm just going to add a row to the top here and we'll get ourselves an even more efficient steam boiler. Uh, it'll just, uh, you know, do a little bit better. Cool. Look at that. Now we've got three tall, but I'm going to do one even better. I'm going to get up there and uh, just throw down a little bit more of this stuff. So that's why I made 36 of these guys. This is the maximum size you can make. Uh, three by three and four boilers tall. Gives you a total size of 36. Awesome. Uh, this is the most efficient steam boiler you can get. Is you can get a bunch of steam. It's telling you the current temperature inside there. There is no you know, steam going on at the moment. Uh, and you're gonna need a good supply of water, which is why I got myself an aqueous accumulator and two water buckets. So let's dig down here and find a good spot to hook this up. Now, uh, it, I kind of forget if we're supposed to hook this up to the uh, fuel box or where does this go? So let's get our liquid ducts here and see if they even connect to the fuel, to the fuel box. I guess they do. Okay. Um, and then, you know, real simple aqueduct setup. Because we're probably going to want to have more of these lines in the future. Ta da! And go. There we go. Is that going to start filling up the water? Perfect. That's what I want to see. So we'll get a decent amount of water filling up in your steam boiler. Very important, absolutely critical that you keep the steam boiler uh, watered at all times. If the steam boiler heats up and it has a bunch of heat inside and it loses water and then you add water to it, just like with those steam engines we were playing with in the past, well, let me tell you, if you do that with a steam boiler, the explosion is just a little bit bigger. And that's not true at all. It's really a lot bigger. Cool. I've got some blaze rods. Now we're going to want to set up a way to automatically feed both blaze rods and peat into this system. And I've got a pretty good idea on how I want to do that. Um, but for now, I just want to go check on my peat farm because, hey, after all, I built it a little bit ago. I want to see how we're doing with it. Oh, look, we're starting to collect some. We've almost got a stack in here. Awesome. And what are we low on? We must be low on sand, I would think. Or maybe, is my turtle not running? Oh, it's not running, ha. Huh. Let me give you guys a real quick tip. When you close the game or a server shuts down, uh, your turtles restart. 
and you're going to want them to be running all the time. So if you run the startup command uh, or create a startup command, it'll run that program every time uh, the computer starts up or the game loads. Cool. So that should uh, let that turtle run a little bit more, and we should start producing a little bit more peat in here. Perfect. So we can see all the dirt, which is uh, the side effect. Oh, that was not cool. All right, guys, looks like a minor mess was they made there, but uh, I'm going to help speed this guy along. How am I doing? Uh, got plenty of dirt. Need more sand, like lots more. Uh, we're going to have to work on making some of that, but let's get, uh, let's get this guy at least running again. Speed him up with a redstone energy cell. How am I for uh, bog earth at the moment? Got a decent amount. If I just throw this guy right there, he should help speed along the deployment of this stuff. There we go. It's getting planted a little bit quicker now. Alright, so like I was saying, everything seems to be working fine, except for a creeper blowing me up. Sweet. Alright, uh, you know what? That's why. There we go. That'll speed it up. Nice. A little bit more bog earth, or, uh, you know, required there, but don't worry about that stuff. We will get some more, uh, you know, just as soon as we get some more sand in there. Cool. And I even picked up a little bit of peat here. Alright, all cleaned up, I think. Had to make myself a new minium stone because that got lost somewhere along the line. Uh, probably, I don't know where it went. Maybe down here somewhere. I just couldn't find it. So, had to go make a new one. But other than that, didn't really lose much. So that's good at least. Just had to put it all back together. So now that we're back on track, let's get our steam boiler going by use of blaze rods. Just got to throw a bunch in there, and you'll see it'll quickly start to burn up the blaze rods. Cool. Uh, what that's doing is it's increasing the internal temperature of the steam boiler. Now, you're going to need a decent amount of this stuff. Like, you're going to need a lot of uh, heat and power gen to heat up a steam boiler of this size. But once it is heated up, it's going to be very efficient, and it'll, uh, you know, do a lot to produce steam. Now, you're not going to get any steam until your heat reaches about 100 degrees C, because, you know, you have to wait for the water to boil, right? That's how you get steam. Hmm, makes sense. All right, so once your steam reaches a decent height, we should be in much better shape. Now let's go look at a way to automate, perhaps, the way of uh, this working. All right, off we go to get some good toys from Red Power 2. All right, guys, how are we going to handle this? Well, we're going to build ourselves a couple of managers. Managers are awesome. Uh, I'm going to need a sorting machine and a regulator. A couple very complicated machines, but uh, I think we can put it all together. So what do we got over here? Uh, that's not really good stuff for red power building, and that's mostly my IC2 stuff. I think in here is where I'm going to find most of what I need. So let's start putting together what we're going to have to do. So the first thing I need to make is a regulator. Regulators are cool machines that do some good stuff. We haven't used them yet this season, but uh, just rest, rest assured they're awesome. So I'm going to need a, uh, uh, looks like, what do we got here for the regulator? Two buffers each, so I'm going to need a total of, um, you know, yeah, two buffers, get myself a regulator, uh, but I need two managers, so I'm going to need a total of four buffers and two item detectors, which are also cool things. So why don't I, like, put these things together off camera so that you guys don't have to sit here and watch me craft, because these are complicated and they will take a little bit of time, uh, but that's okay. I'll manage and I'll be back when I'm done. All right, let's see. Do I have everything I need now? I think so. Uh, these guys up here, the regulator, the sorting machine, uh, red doped wafers, which I just made a few more of, uh, some blue alloy ingots, which indicates that this thing runs on power, by the way, and some wood. Nice. Two managers. Awesome. Perfect and excellent. Love everything about it so far. So uh, going to go actually while I'm out here and just get myself a bunch more blaze rods. We're going to need, uh, because my peat farm is uh, you know still in the early stages, it's a good thing I have this big old blaze farm here. I actually have a pretty good plan on this, uh, but wow, there's some stuff going on over there with those trees, isn't there? All right, so let's go into this room and see what we can't set up. And it's getting dark out, so I might want to sleep through the night here. Uh, but I've got a chest full of blaze rods, and for now I just want to manually fill a few more up into the steam boiler here so we make sure not to lose too much of the internal heat that we've already developed. All right, let's go sleep through the night and come back. All right, so what the manager does is it allows you to manage the inventory of multiple blocks uh, and kind of route items around based on a nice and awesome priority system. So let's get it set up. Uh, basically 
basically you want to set it up here so that the uh, front of the manager is attached to the inventory that you want to keep supplied. Okay, and then uh, you're going to want to run some pneumatic tubing to another inventory like this, and then uh, place this guy down right here. Cool. Now this is a uh, a pretty simple manager system, but it should help you guys understand uh, the basics of how this thing works. Now I'm also going to, while I'm here, uh, get some power set up on this stuff, so let's do this. Cool. Uh, I do have some blue alloy wires, and I'm going to run them straight over to my battery box underground in my other house. So let's uh, dig through the ground here and just hope that I have enough blue alloy wire to make it over there. And I'm not thinking I have enough. We'll see, though. Won't be too hard to get it if I need to a little bit more. So I'm just going to tap into this guy. Um, yeah, it looks like i got to tidy up something here. Now there is a little bit of energy loss on these wires, so uh, we're going to see how much trouble we get into, but I'm going to need a little bit more, so let me get some real quick. Alright, so I connected my wiring here. You can see a small amount of power making its way over. There is a little bit of loss on these lines, like I said, so we're going to see you know, if that becomes a problem, but it looks like we're doing okay. And uh, you know, we don't need to use a terribly large amount of power for this, so I'm thinking we'll survive. Excellent. Let's get uh, some dirt here to cover this up so that it looks nice again. So now that we've got our managers powered, we have to tell them how to behave. And there's a couple interfaces here and buttons you can click on to make this a reality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that this manager is controlling the steam boiler, as you can see here. Right now it's empty of inventory. This manager is controlling what's allowed inside the chest. I'm going to tell him that he can have an infinite number of whatever I put in the interface here by setting this mode right here like that. Okay, if it's in this mode, it's going to keep exactly how many items I tell it to keep. But in this, it's going to keep an unlimited amount, uh, however many it can, of blaze rods. You're allowed to have blaze rods. And note that it pulled some blaze rods away because this guy is sitting here thinking I'm not allowed to have anything. So if I put blaze rods in here, it's going to pull them right out. This manager is not allowing any items inside the steam boiler yet. But I'm going to actually change that and keep it in this mode, which specifies how many of whatever item I tell it to keep. And uh, I'm going to make this a higher priority by changing this to the number one. That means that this manager uh, is, is a higher priority than this one. So we'll try and keep him satisfied higher priority than keeping this guy satisfied, okay? So, all I gotta do is put a bunch of blaze rods in here and tell it exactly how many to go ahead and keep. So let's go with uh, a stack, should be good. So what's gonna happen is the manager is gonna deploy a stack of blaze rods and every time it runs out and uses one in the steam boiler, this manager is gonna say, hey, I'm, uh, you know, I, I don't have enough blaze rods in here. Go ahead and give me some more. And this guy's gonna keep feeding more over to him. And uh, he won't ever put more than a stack in and he won't even allow more than a stack. So for example, uh, you know, if I manually put extras in there, it'll pull them out. Cool. But it will keep one stack at all times. And all excess blaze rods will go into this chest over here. How nice is that? And that is the manager. You can basically manage inventories with it. Uh, nice interface, and uh, you can have different things be different priorities. You can, uh, you know, keep a certain different amount of each thing in there. So we could also, if we wanted to, start feeding this system with peat. So let's look at how that might be made into a reality. Uh, what I want to do here then is just modify a couple things. I know I had a, uh, you know what? I don't have a restriction tube on this. How am I for iron at the moment? Mm, not so much. I wonder if this will work. Ah, it was worth a try. Just one piece of iron, please. Ah, I missed it. Okay, so let's get a restriction tube set up. Ooh, I hope I have enough of this stuff. That might not be enough brass, actually. That'll do. Should be plenty now. And 
And what I'm going to set up over here is a restriction tube on the top of this guy. So that the last place this peat goes is into this barrel. So that's going to kind of be my overflow barrel. But then I want to run uh, under the ground here a connector into this chest uh, from my peat farm, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's not where I want to be. There it is. Cool. So what we should wind up with now is the peat farm. Every time it grows a little bit, we're going to have to wait for some to show up here. Um, first priority will be to fill these peat-fired engines, okay? But the next priority then, if I grab some peat here, will be to dump it into the chest. But remember I said that if the manager is configured in such a way that it's not allowing peat in there, it's going to instantly pull it out of the chest. So we want to put one piece of peat in the manager saying, hey, you're allowed to hang on to that stuff. And then peat goes into the relay. And we should see it filter its way down this path at some point. Hey, there it comes. Awesome. How am I for dirt? Good. And it'll go ahead and land its way into there. Perfect. That will do nicely. Okay. Uh, now all we got to do is uh, pretty much set this guy up to keep, I don't know, a little extra peat in there. Let's say half a stack. Boom. It's going to satisfy that need. So basically what we're going to have here is the peat showing up. Did I put 31 or 32? Huh. Oh, probably because there uh, wasn't enough. Okay, that's why. So it's going to keep peat in the steam boiler. If I got a little bit more here, we'd see how well this is working. So our first priority then will be using uh, the blaze rods. And then what it's going to do is when blaze rods run out, so say we completely run out of blaze rods in this chest, uh, it'll also start putting uh, some peat in there, half a stack at a time. And it'll keep the peat supplied. Awesome. And this is a little internal buffer, as we can see. So we've got a strong amount of steam going on here. Lots of steam, lots of energy. Let's see how we can convert the steam into build craft power because that is going to be our next step. And also, we're probably going to want to automate uh, transferring the uh, blaze rods from one spot to another. So we're going to have to figure that out, too. So how do we get steam out of our boiler and into a form of energy for Buildcraft? Well, we're going to need some steam engines. You guys remember my hobbyist steam engines? I used these at the very beginning of the series. Well, they're going to come into play again. Uh, all I need to do is get a couple things. Let's see, I've got some levers. I'm good there. Uh, I'm also going to have uh, some redstone energy conduits. And for now, I'm just going to get out of my bag here this redstone energy cell, which is a little bit low, but not too bad. Okay. Uh, to connect up our liquid ducts, um, they can also transport steam. So just place them down right there. And you can see they've already filled up with steam, which is perfect. Um, all I have to do now is run them down to some, uh, some of this stuff. Let's see. You know what I should also get out of my bag? I should get my crescent hammer. Always throwing my bag around. All right. So get this guy out of here. We're going to place down our hobbyist steam engines. And uh, this is not the permanent position for them. I haven't quite figured out exactly where I want everything to be just yet, but uh, it will be laid out pretty soon. Then we just got to rotate them and supply a place for the power hookup to be. That's going to be right here. Okay, don't forget to rotate these guys to orange so that they can output energy and align your engines properly. Excellent. Okay, now uh, it's just a matter of supplying steam to these guys uh, and a redstone signal, of course. So let's, uh, for now, we'll just go ahead and give them steam. Let's see what happens. Go. And you'll see the steam instantly flows in there. And uh, it starts going to go in into this guy, and then we just got to give him a redstone signal, like I said. So do I have any red alloy wire on me? I might. Or I might not. That's right. I can do this another way. At least for now, before we wrap up the episode, which is about to happen, by the way. 
sorry to say, but it is pretty close to that wrapping up point, and we're going to have to come back next time and see uh, a more efficient way of generating power with the steam. But for now, just because I have these guys handy, I'm going to go ahead and turn on all my engines, and you'll see that they start producing power almost immediately. The steam internal buffer fills up very quickly. You might also remember that hobbyist steam engines run at a max of 1.6 Minecraft joules per tick. Well, not so much anymore. Once you supply steam to them, their maximum energy is 2.0 Minecraft joules per tick. So if you have an external steam source, like a steam boiler, they can produce this much. Now here's the, uh, the, the basic gist on this, okay? Um, each cubic meter of a low pressure boiler can produce 10 steam per tick, and 10 steam per tick is enough to run a single hobbyist steam engine, okay? So uh, that's not bad. You're basically getting two Minecraft joules per tick for 10 steam. And you get 10 steam for each cubic meter of this thing. So we've got 36 of these, remember? I had 36 of these blocks. So we're able to produce 360 steam per tick, uh, which means we can run uh, about, you know, 36 of these engines, the hobbyist steam engines. Not bad. You can see we're building up a good amount of internal buffer of power here. Uh, this guy is going to be filling up uh, pretty quickly. Not too bad. Now if we want, and we will, uh, we can get a few more steam engines that are upgrades of this. We can go ahead and take a look at the commercial steam engine. This guy requires some iron plates, and that guy is going to run with four Minecraft jewels per tick. Um, but it's going to require more steam, of course. Uh, you're going to need to supply it with uh, a bit more steam than the hobbyists. And then finally, your industrial steam engines are where we're going to use our steel. So you can see we're going to need some steel gears and some steel plates. And these produce eight Minecraft jewels per tick. So uh, not too bad. Not bad at all, honestly. So I'm thinking we can run about, I don't know, four or five of these things. We're going to have to see what we can come up with, but we should be able to produce a significant amount of MJ. So we're going to have to wrap up now, though. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on uh, this episode of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, episode 23. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out the steam power production. We're going to have uh, quite a bit of power in here, and also note there is a way to produce steam and create industrial craft power. So this power plant of mine is going to have multiple purposes. All right, guys, take it easy.